If someone says they're a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, they're legit. All of a sudden you get in a real fight and someone actually lands one and you're like, where am I? We can get out of school if we just call in a bomb threat. Welcome. This is live from Langley, BC, the number one podcast in Langley. Actually, uh, I, I know a few podcasts in Langley, and now we've accumulated over a million views. So we're definitely the number one podcast in Langley. I'm excited to tell all you guys about that. And we talk about news, events, and businesses all over Langley. So today's guest is actually a Langley resident. This is Keenan. He is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu athlete and a founder of a seven-figure marketing agency called Longhouse Media. If you've ever been on the Langley one way and you are strolling by and someone's trying to back up real quick and you have to stop, his face is right there on that, uh, on that, uh, what is that? That's a, that's a, there's a sign there. So next time you're down there, make sure you look both ways. You'll definitely catch uh, his face on there. So Longhouse specializes in launching new businesses and growing existing businesses from 500K to 5 million. So we're going to talk a little bit about what they've done. And he's been featured on all sorts of magazines like Forbes, BC Business, CBC, and Tech Republic. So I'm excited to have this caliber of a guest on today. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is all your accolades, Keenan, but what have you done in Langley in particular? Because, you know, you've been here for quite a while and it when when we first had a chat, it was almost like we did meet each other before, but we didn't know how we met each other. We, so yeah, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, uh, you know, and what you've done in Langley and how long you've been here. Well, first, it's awesome to meet you in person if we haven't met in the past. Like, I think you do good marketing. I can appreciate good marketing. I've seen your name, your face. I don't know if you've done some signage around, but uh, obviously... We both feel like we've know, we've known each other. Uh, my roots in Langley go back a long time. I moved here when I was two. Uh, I used to live right by Al Anderson Pool, which is the pool that I used to actually work at before launching this marketing company. Uh, you know, I umpired Langley baseball. I've done sports in Langley. Went to Langley Secondary School. Uh, Everything about my life has been Langley, so I'm very happy to be on the Langley podcast. The one and only. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, you said that about Al Anderson today, and it's funny, as you said that, when you said, oh, I worked there growing up, I had to figure out, is that where I first saw you? Because I used to go there a ton when I was younger. And, you know, you always see the lifeguards. And if you're there often enough, you never talk to them or anything, but you kind of start to recognize the faces. And that's what I find a lot of the time going to the mall, going anywhere in Langley, I'll walk past someone and I'm like, I know that person. I don't think I've ever talked to them, but maybe I'd seen them in high school playing sports or something like that. So it's it's crazy how small of a town Langley gets when you're in those you know public areas. Um, but uh, yeah, so you were you've been in Langley. You went to LSS. What what else? You know why are you still here? First of all, <laughs> you've been here for over many twenty plus almost thirty years probably. Uh, yeah, what what made you stay around here? So I've been asked that by a few people. Langley is really close to everything. If you like the city, you drive 40 minutes into the city. If you like the water, you drive 25, 30 minutes to White Rock. If you like hiking, you can go towards uh, any direction, really. So Langley is just close to everything. And it's quiet enough that you can still relax. But it's also, you know, busy enough. And there's, there's, it's growing. There's more stuff coming here that you can do, you know, in the evening or uh, just trying to get a little bit more active. But Langley just is close to everything. And if you're looking for vacation spots, pretty much anywhere around Vancouver, Langley in particular, you drive two hours in any direction, you get something really cool. Maybe three hours out to like Kelowna or something as well. But you got Whistler, you got Seattle, you got Vancouver Island. Any direction you drive, you get a really cool vacation spot as well. So I never get bored. Yeah, so you mentioned that a lot, a lot of people don't uh, remember that we're so close to the border. We're literally, well, actually Langley goes to the border. And if we're, you know, in Brookswood, it's 10 minutes. If you're in, in Willowbrook, it's maybe 15, 20 minutes to the border. That takes you straight down. You can go to California. You can. Have you ever been down there or anything like that? I've been to California. I like Disneyland. They're closing Splash Mountain. Oh, I didn't know that. They're permanently closing Splash Mountain. I called my mom. She was very upset about that. Um, I have been to California a handful of times. Did you drive there or did you? I've never made the drive. Okay. That's I hop on the plane. I get a little motion sick. So I hop on the plane. Oh, and I'm there in like two drive. hours. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's nice to have that there. And I mean, everyone would say probably Langley, the lower mainland is like the California of Canada, just because of the weather that we have here. And uh, I don't know, I guess 
prices of homes too. <laughs> it's just so expensive to live here and everything. So yeah, um, yeah, that's exciting. And then you said also that you're a uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, athlete. And it's funny because you mentioned that, you know, my manager um, is also somebody who you've roll, you did you roll with them or you didn't? You were, you've just trained with them before? Are you referring to Sean? Sean, yeah. So, so yeah, Sean's super awesome guy. He's had some uh, MMA fights as well. Very tough guy, really successful business person as well. I'm, I'm very happy to see him from afar. I don't talk to him too frequently, but, um, you know, there's a mutual respect between anyone who trains Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, especially Brazilian Jiu Jitsu under um, Marcus Soares, who's both of our um, instructors. Um, Sean is a, uh, a very, very talented Brazilian Jiu Jitsu athlete, and that's just clearly translated into business skills as well. Yeah, well, I hear that. I mean, all the time, every podcast, every like high performing um, business owner always says something about some sort of martial arts, right? Because they learn dedication from it and, and they're not scared. What What's the worst thing that could happen ultimately? Well, when you're fighting, you'll get punched in the face hard and you'll fall asleep. But um, when you're not fighting, what, what you're going to talk to somebody and they're going to tell you your idea sucks. Okay. That's that's not as bad as getting punched in the face. Um, and so you said Marcus Soares. Is, is there a, um, a judo around here? So I started in judo uh-huh. and I started at like the Langley Judo Club uh-huh. and there was only like two or three kids. It was me, my brother, and sometimes another person. And we ended up training um, a lot. We started competing a lot. And at some point we ended up um, going to tournaments and like the instructors didn't come with us. Um, so we actually got kind of adopted by the Abbotsford Judo Club, which is not that far away. It's like from my place in Murrayville, it's like 25 minutes. And Sensei Suda there, he saw that we were alone. He said, you come warm up with our guys, just come train. He stood in our corner. He really supported me and my brother when we're nervous, like we were like eight and nine years old, standing like sheepishly waiting for our fight, which is a scary prospect in and of its own right. So um, we ended up training primarily judo in Abbotsford with Sensei Suda, and I can't speak highly enough of him. Um, the Langley Judo Club, there's actually now a really good trainer out of the same gym that I trained jiu-jitsu at. Um, so it's just on the Langley Bypass. Um, I can't remember the instructor's name, but um, anyone who's like listening to this, like judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, really any martial art, these are my two favorites. Um, it will help you in more ways than just being able to defend yourself. The amount of dedication that you can get from it. A jujitsu black belt takes like 15 years. My dad got his black belt, I think, in 16, 17 years of like training, like hard training, like, you know, like two, three times a week. Um, Marcus doesn't just give them out like candy. And it's pretty well enforced in the jujitsu community. If someone says they're a Brazilian jujitsu black belt, they're legit. The, the, there's a, a, a dojo in Langley on the bypass, you said, right? So that's the Marcus Soares one. Yes. And how long has that been there? So Marcus brought jujitsu to Canada 26 years ago. It's actually like oh, wow. the 26th anniversary. He brought it to Canada directly from Brazil. And um, his style of jujitsu is like of the Carlson Gracie lineage, uh, which is a very self-defense um, style of jujitsu. The principles basis is you want to get on top. There's some sport jujitsu where um, still amazing, like it, from a self-defense perspective, it's great. Um, but if I'm in a street fight, I want to get on top of someone, be able to either control the person or finish the person rather than from being on your back uh, that's what i hear that's what i always hear is mainly when you in jiu-jitsu that's the first thing that people do because when i went to a class or two and i'm rolling with somebody i, I you know they're, they, they're like start from your feet and and i'm like okay cool let's go it's you know my my rugby background is like well, i'm gonna take you down hard and that's gonna be the that's gonna be it and then they lay down on their back and i'm like well that's not fun <laughs> like stand up. And I guess that's kind of like the default pull you in the guard and start from there type of scenario. I've heard it described by, from people like Joe Rogan who say that fighting a jujitsu athlete, it's kind of like fighting a shark in water. So when a jujitsu person, a jujitsu fighter does pull someone into guard, like it's not a baseless strategy. You're pulling someone into the water and starting that shark attack that way. Right. Um, if you're fighting someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Um, if you know, if you're fighting someone who knows a bit of jujitsu and they also happen to be able to smack some hammer fists on you, it, it makes that, uh, that strategy a little less effective. Um, there's a, a lot of cases of certain uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighters in MMA who maybe are not experienced enough in defending from the strikes. Um, they don't do the combat jiu-jitsu, which actually permits strikes, which I've started to train a little bit more. Um, it will really make a difference in that person's um, 
self-defense situation or in their professional fighting uh, circumstances if they have trained a little bit of this top style Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which you get on top and control the imp- opponent. Yeah, it's when everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face is what I heard. <laughs> and it's true, right? If you're sparring, and it's, you know, super casual, you're getting touched. And then all of a sudden you get into a real fight and someone actually lands one. And you're like, where am I? And what do I do now? Okay, so that's it's something that I hear you. It's not really taught. It's something that's instinctual. And a lot of the time people can't cope with it. And even though they're unreal with like their power and, you know, their, 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 their form, but they just can't handle that punch. And they're, you know, they just get reset. It's like a reset button. So yeah, it's crazy to, to think about that. Um, I've never gone into it. I've always just played regular sports that were uh, a little bit more uh, <laughs> passive. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, growing up though, in high school, I think that's where a lot of people get into all these sports. And did they do any of that in at LSS or was that only just uh, through your own separate training? We were incredibly fortunate at Langley Secondary. And also, I went to H.C. Stafford for one year during that transition of it yeah, like being like a middle that. school. Yeah. Incredibly fortunate. We had a teacher um, named uh, Dwayne Croker who started – he was a rugby guy and a football player. And he started uh, the Langley United Wrestling Club. Oh. So other schools were allowed to come. It was mainly H.C. Stafford and LSS. But, you know, we had guys from Brooks would come. We had people from Poppy. And he – like he, he – put it all on the line. Like my understanding is that when there was like even like teacher strikes and stuff, I think he like continued to, to do it because this wrestling club was helping so many kids, like helping so many kids. And, you know, not every part of Langley has a lot of money. You know, there's Murrayville and Walnut Grove and Willoughby, but like there's some areas in Langley that maybe don't have as much family money and wrestling became a really good outlet for these kids, um, including me. I got to burn off all my energy. I was very well behaved at home because I had this physical outlet that got rid of all my energy. I'd go home and write my essays. Um, we're very, very fortunate. And then once um, once the kind of club got a little bit bigger and I was at LSS, super lucky, um, Don Tomlinson's husband actually is a bronze medalist in the Olympics in wrestling. And he started teaching classes as well and brookswood had a really good um a good teacher as well um i believe his name is munzee uh, mm-hmm. i don't know if that name rings a bell yeah, for you does, yeah. uh, awesome wrestling coach as well so look we had like this trio of coaches that were unbelievable and it was right here in langley and they all were out of the same club wrestling uh langley united is Lang- that still around langley united um was what they called it and like we had teachers from like all these different oh. schools and stuff um i'm not sure if it's still um happening as of a couple of years ago it was um but like going back to the, the jujitsu and the takedowns, it's so important to be able to get someone to the ground to like if you want to impose your um, strategy into a fight, like being able to have that takedown base, which I fortunately had from judo and wrestling in high school. Um, it, it definitely has helped uh, um, fight athletic guys like you when you come to the gym with um, like a rugby background or a football background, which, by the way, is some of the best skill sets to or best bases to have as an athlete. Um, rugby water polo believe it or not oh yeah i could see that and then rock climbing because your hands are so oh yeah your hands strong. are like giant hands i've seen uh professional rock climbers and their their fingers are like the size of two of mine it's crazy um but yeah so so all these sports because i'm always curious how sports has influenced your you know ex- your your journey in, in in business would you say that it has helped and how one hundred percent. Without athletics, I am a mess. I'm a I'm a ball of energy, and if I don't burn off some of that, I, I can't focus. I can't sit down on a computer. I have a desk job now. I'm doing marketing for people, and that involves looking at data, doing split tests, running experiments, like doing a lot of just computer work, video editing. Like as you know, that takes a lot of time. Like um, being able to burn off that energy doing for me like a physical activity, like like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or wrestling or swimming, um, it goes a long way at making me a better business person and probably like a better boyfriend and probably a better son to my mom, like <laughs> probably all of the above. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely see that. I feel like a lot of successful entrepreneurs that I've talked to recently, more than anything, they all kind of stem. We all kind of go back to like the ADHD. Like <laughs> we have some sort of, uh, you know, high functioning attention disorder, and sports uh, or some sort of activity always comes in and kind of balances us out as much as it also helps us, you know, develop different, I guess, 
um, components of, of a thought process, right? Where you're, you, you could utilize the same um, strategies as, as say in a sport as you would in, in business or some, something like that, right? So I don't want to get too deep into that because otherwise we'll go Rogan on this podcast and start talking about <laughs> our, our ancestors and the primates and, uh, I, you know, so uh, <laughs> let's stick to Langley. But um, it's interesting though that, yeah, I found that a lot too, that a lot of uh, Langley schools, they also came together a ton. Um, and LSS recently, they just did uh, a bunch of upgrades. I don't know. Have you been in touch or there recently? It looks like a completely different, different school. We filmed a video oh, cool. um, there recently for this, like, it was like a peak of COVID. This, like, Chinese company was like, we need, like, a cool video, futuristic video for this, like, face mask. And it was one of those face masks where you can, like, see the person's mouth still. And we went down to that school. It looks like a futuristic school. It, honestly, it looks like that, like, Zoe 101 TV show. It looks like that, like, boarding school for, like, cool kids. Um, so... Honestly, I wish that I went there while it looked like this. It's uh, it's quite the quite the pad. Were you just uh, what what part of the school were you in or, or around in the courtyard or because now they've opened it up and they have it's kind of like a semicircle from what I remember. So I've walked through it since we just for that video we used the external. Yeah, um, that's all we needed. It was a quick like five shots and that video turned out really well because it looked so good they had the cool flag poles they had the the whole white front it just looked really impressive which really helps when you're doing video marketing because when people are scrolling you need to catch people's attention in that first glance and having a really cool visual modern building uh, definitely helped that project no they've done a ton of work i i almost went there i went uh i went to school in uh langley city elementary school and then my uh, my mom's just like my sister went, went to school at LSS while I was still at Douglas, and uh, my mom heard all the stories about what happened at Douglas in the later years and what happened at LSS, <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the time. So uh, she's like, "Yeah, we're gonna move up the hill to Brookswood, and uh, you can play basketball there, but you're not going to LSS because I know uh, she's basically saying how." I know with your the way that you think, the way that you do things, you're going to end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I, 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 I think I think she was right. So luckily, we ended up going to Brookswood, and um, I'm looking forward to having some people on from Brookswood. I know there's some you know coaches and all that because at the end of the day, like it, it's cool. There's teachers, you know, they're doing their job. They care about the kids, but the coaches, they're there doing their job. And they don't get paid for the extracurricular activities that they also coach. That's that's completely out of the goodness of their heart. Obviously, sometimes they're PE teachers. So they don't have, you know, papers to grade at home. But when, uh, you know, everybody goes home, uh, they're still there doing practice, two, three practices a day. And and they're actually forming, uh, you know, the, the shape, they're shaping the minds of these kids after hours. And something that I've learned from just coaches is, you know, hard work, dedication, commitment, just doing those things uh, religiously to get the result. Otherwise, don't don't complain when you suck. Like, realistically, don't complain when you don't get played because you weren't here mm -hmm. at 6 a.m. when the gym was open before school. And these other guys were, even though they're not as good, their, their you know, uh, effort is showing to the, the coach. So they're going to get the time. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see how, you know, that translated. We were so fortunate to have amazing coaches at Langley Secondary and at HD Stafford when I was there as well. It's it's so impressive when a teacher can have a full time job and then run wrestling practices three times, four times a week. Like uh, Mr. Croker was an awesome, awesome guy because not only was he coaching the wrestling team, but when that season was over, he was coaching the rugby team, and when that season was over, he was coaching the football team. And at sometimes those would overlap. He was probably there every day, late into the night, and then going home and grading my paper about hamburgers. <laughs> so what? He was an English teacher too. He was. Uh, he was an English teacher as well. Yeah, he taught English as well as uh, social studies. Interesting. Wow, that's crazy. I wonder if we if we clip that. I, I think maybe he's still there, or still recently there. Maybe we'll get this in front of him. <laughs> He'd love that. I hope so. I, I, while we were there, he was so. Also, to paint a picture, uh, Mr. Croker is one of the most muscular people I've ever met. So he was also waking up on top of all this. He was also waking up at like 5 a.m. and becoming like a physical specimen. Like I remember the, the first day that we showed up in his classroom, it was all oriented one way, and we all immediately noticed like this. This guy was like jacked and then the next day the whole classroom had shifted to the other direction so everyone was just like 
speculating that this guy just picked up all the desks like this and like um, <laughs> shifted it all. Um, but no, he's a fantastic guy. And um, my dad actually ended up offering him a, a very high paying job. And he said, no, I'm passionate about teaching. Wow. And that always stuck with me. I, I really, uh, I really appreciate good teachers. The ones that care about their students. Right. And it sounds like he's also like a, a, a old David Goggins before David Goggins. <laughs> and this guy, you know, was always working on himself on top of everything. And that's, that's, you know, good, good role model to have. I wish, uh, I was able to meet him. I know maybe, you know, I have some friends that were in, you know, in, in all those different sports in LSS. I'm sure if I, if they saw this, they're like, oh yeah, we know exactly who you're talking about. That's cool. I, I think he's a principal somewhere now. He was working oh. on his master's when, uh, at that same time, uh, I'm, I think he's a principal now. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent certain. I, I've lost contact with him, but it's funny that you didn't uh, end up going to, um, oh, yeah. secondary I'm because, sure. um, it was dangerous. Oh, <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I, I never found it that dangerous. Like, obviously, there was the the fake school shooter. There was the <laughs> yeah. bomb threats. There was all these. I was there for all of those. I personally was never too frightened because, like, I felt like you know, I, if there was a gun in the school, I probably would have heard a shot or two. Um, but it's definitely uh, frightening when the uh, the uh, kind of the announcement goes on. It's like you know, one of the administrators almost crying, saying, "There's like we're in full lockdown. There's like a school shooter." It was a, that was an experience. Yeah. That was right around the time where in the States started to be really bad. And then for it to happen here, everyone, and it happened so often happened like two, three times that year. And everyone was all worried. We were hearing about this on, um, I can't even remember, maybe Facebook, people were posting videos on their flip phones. Right. And, uh, I think they ended up finding out that it wasn't even like, I don't know, it was a fake gun or something like that, or. There was one instance when it was like, it was literally a fake gun. It was an airsoft gun and they had like painted over the orange part. Mm -hmm. And the intention probably was to cause a stir, um, you know, and then people were posting videos like the SWAT team came in. Thank goodness. Like none of the teachers or none of the kids got shot by the SWAT team just by like, you know, just the surprise factor. You know, you never know. Like I know they're highly trained, but when you turn a corner, you might get a little jumpy. So like there was videos of you know, teachers having guns pointed at them and oh, like the SWAT sorry. team screaming. And uh, we were locked down for the first one for four hours. And, you know, my parents are calling me, asking me if I'm okay. I'm like, yeah, mom, I'm watching Beowulf on the TV. Like we're, we're totally fine. Like I, I had a teacher who uh, was playing guitar and stuff like, like he, he, we went into like lockdown for like the first like 30 minutes. Yeah. But after that, I think uh, it was the general to figure out what's happening. It was the general consensus after the first 30 minutes that it's probably nothing. We heard police going down the hallway. So we felt pretty safe. I, I should speak for myself. I felt pretty safe after the first like 15, 30 minutes of not hearing anything. But then there was all these copycats because they realized we can get out of school if we just call in a bomb threat and the whole school would get shut down for the day. So I think it happened three or four times over the course of two or three months that we just kept missing a school. It's funny we ended up here because Langley's awesome. But then they had those <laughs> moments in time where, yeah, you, you kind of you look back and, and, and I'm glad it's changed. I haven't heard of anything like that recently. I haven't heard of any, you know, uh, big, big commotions like that. Um, any any I'm trying to think. But, um, yeah, I don't want to talk about them, even if there was. <laughs> but I definitely heard some other, you know, uh, worse scenarios coming out of. Uh, other areas. So I think it's pretty safe here regardless. And, um, you know, I, that's something I always tried to write. That's so important. A lot of the time people don't understand, you know, the different schools that are in Langley. Um, there's, there's, you know, different types of crowds. So uh, if that's important, you know, if you're in that age where you have kids at that school, um, and you have the option to pick where you, where they go, definitely there's some better areas to compared to others. So, yeah, it's always good to keep that in mind. <laughs> and the reason these stories stand out is because they're so unusual here. Like Langley is such a safe community, like especially where I live up in Murrayville. Like I walk around, I'm a late night walker. I walk around at midnight and I see grandmas with their poodles. I don't see uh, any funny business that's uh, dangerous. And we're very lucky to live in a community where the stories that we have are fake airsoft guns, know, right? um, as opposed to other places in the world where it's uh, probably um, particularly yeah. more dangerous. Oh, yeah, so much more dangerous. Um, you said you're in Murrayville. So did you go up, uh, school up in Murrayville or like elementary or? 
Yeah. So I started down down near Al Anderson, uh, down near City Park. I was at Blacklock for the first few years. Um, came to Langley when I was two. Um, Blacklock was a great school. Uh, we just happened to move up to Murrayville, and then I changed to Murrayville Elementary, where we were in the the last, uh, I guess, the last cohort of people to graduate from there before it got shut down. And now it's actually a really nice development there. That um, that reunion building, I walk by it all the time. They've they've done a a good job, and I should say. Murrayville has seen such a revitalization in the past. I've been in Murrayville for 20 years. Uh, it has seen such a revitalization. There's so many young, happy families using the park, running around. There's dogs and and like cute little kids now. Um, it's really gone through a revitalization because of some of the development that's gone on there. And they haven't lost any of the nice community aspects. The parks are still nice. Um, I know they took away some of the trees over by James Hill, um, but there's another nice dog park right down the down the street that I would take my husky to all the time. And it's uh Yeah, the forest a, behind James Hill is an interesting place. I remember uh there was there were some pretty cool trees back there. And like you could yeah, you could get lost back there. So and I heard there was actually animals back there at one point. I can't remember you might know better than I do. I used to walk around there. It was a magical little place. Like at one point, there was this giant tree. I don't know how old this tree could have been, but it was one of the biggest trees I've ever seen. And it had fallen over. So you had this giant uprooted tree bigger than this room. Like, And it was just a giant wall of roots. And it was so unusual to be there because like the forest isn't too big. But the fact that that tree had probably lived for over 100 years and then to – tip over and just kind of be there for all the kids to to look yeah. at yeah it's very cool place. cool place to go hang out for sure um yeah i mean uh maryville is definitely developing we have a few people that are, that have been on that are from there our producer grew up there i think as well um so yeah there's a there's a ton of um you know a lot of memories uh coming from maryville and it's always kind of, I mean, it's always been older, you know, older families that have been there until what I've noticed recently. Maybe it was just because I was younger, but <laughs> I've definitely noticed a lot of uh, younger families moving there now. So that's uh, always nice to have in any area. Um, I think, uh, oh, did we talk about it already? There was a dispensary that was trying to get approval in Murrayville. Oh, no. In Murrayville? They want to hurt my community with a dispensary? So a dispensary and I mean liquor store, right? So the liquor store, they haven't had, they don't actually have a liquor store in Maryville. It's all all the way down the hill. So there is now one um, down the hill. There's that liquor for less right by the Starbucks that went in there. That one, that parking lot bugs me oh, all the yeah, time when I drive yeah, through there. Too. And then there is actually a liquor store uh, beside the best sushi place in Langley, Co Sushi. Um, it's right across from the Murrayville Pub. So I think the same oh, owners, oh, yeah, there is. the same owners actually own that whole kind of complex. So they own the Murrayville Pub, they own the liquor store, and then I think they rent out to the new Pizza Hut that's there and a, a few other buildings in in that area, which I'm sure is uh, booming. I totally now. forgot about the liquor store there. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, but because I had a. Uh, a guest on, I don't know if we talked about it, I forgot, but he was telling me that they were trying to approve a dispensary up uh, right by the MTF. So that would have gone over well. Um, apparently he got, you know, there was a lot of pushback because the fact that it was walking distance from the school that was right there. Is that Langley Christian or? Langley Christian School is right up by the MTF and by that Tim Hortons up up there on the on the yes, highway. Yes, they were talking about putting a dispensary there. And it wasn't even, you know, it wasn't like he was, he was totally for the idea, but more so for the, like, why are we pushing back on it just because we have all these fears and, and all of that? Because, you know, Maryville overall is a pretty traditional area. If you compare it to any other place in Langley, I'd say Maryville is the most traditional neighborhood in Langley. Um, and because of that, they, they, they kind of stay pretty, you know, untouched. They have a hospital there, typically close to the hospital. It's a little bit safer, I would say. So, and, and a lot of the, you know, the older communities are there too. So, yeah, I mean, that's just, I think that's why it's stayed that way. And um, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what happens there moving forward. Children will find pot um, <laughs> with or without a dispensary. <laughs> they're, like, they're like magnets. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. That's why dispensary was originally, you know, a good idea because at least it's tested and they know where it's coming from and, I thought I didn't even think you could get it anywhere else now. Like I, I obviously don't I use it, but it's yeah. I used to when I was younger, and yeah, now it's like I think at one point there was like an Uber app for it, and I don't even think if that's still around. But it was crazy to me. You could Uber order uh, Uber for 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 marijuana, which is nuts. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so, okay. So we were talking about your business is in marketing, right? We're going to get into the sushi. I just want to go over a little bit of, about what you do because, you know, it's what we talk about here on, on the podcast, Langley, Langley businesses and how Langley businesses tend to thrive in Langley and what you've seen working in Langley with the with clientele, especially being in that exact niche that we're talking about. Um, you know, what do you see working in Langley? Most of all, like you do, you said you've done work for, um, uh, I don't know what I can say about that, but maybe you mentioned that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, um, first of all, like businesses need to be authentic and like, um, when they're authentic marketing wise, um, people want to buy from them. You know, if you have a, uh, a lawyer who's just passionate about law or a realtor who's just so passionate about real estate, that's the person you want to work with. You don't want to pay $200, $300 an hour to a lawyer who, kind of just does it because he makes some money doing it. What we like doing is highlighting businesses that are passionate about what they do. And when we pair that with our modern marketing methods, we can take a lot of businesses from like 500,000 to 5 million. Or if you're expecting to do like $500,000, we can help launch those businesses by building those brands right away. Um, We've worked with over 300 small, medium-sized businesses. We've worked with the city of Langley. We've worked with the township of Langley. We've worked with like UBC and University of the Fraser Valley. Um, We've done political campaigns, um, um, both in Langley and outside of Langley. And um, the thing about marketing is, is marketing principles translate across anything. Uh, a lot of the the textbooks and whatnot will say, like, choose one niche, like work on chiropractors and just do the best chiropractic marketing that there is. Back to the ADHD, I get so bored doing that. I want to learn about dog groomers and I want to learn about plumbers and laser eye surgeons and universities and applying what I know and... Um, bringing awareness to those kind of like passionate brands is what makes me really happy. So would you find that there's a specific way that, you know, has worked best for showcasing all those things? Yeah. So um, Apple invented this form of marketing. So historically used to have a blender, right? And it'd be called like the super blender 5,000. And they would start with that. What it is, super blender 5,000. Then it would be the how. So what makes it special? Oh, it has this much steel in it and this many power functions and this and this. And then at the end, it's like, why? Uh, To help you have a nutritious lifestyle. Apple flipped it and they started with um, bring the world together through music. How? Through having over a thousand songs on your iPod. Flipping it from the what it is, uh, how it's done, and the why, to now doing the why statement first, then how, then what, has really mixed up the marketing industry in a very interesting way. And when you apply that same principle to other businesses, lawyers, dog groomers, uh, anything really, it works. And then so when when you're saying all this, though, um, how would you, is like, is this all through print? Is this through like digital? Is this through... Um, I don't even know like a signage. Um, are you doing events? Like, because obviously you, everything you just said, you could use in every Avenue. Right. And so, um, what, what have you seen the most success is kind of like putting, getting your foot in the door. Digital marketing is the most cost effective way to grow your business. Um, we're a digital marketing agency. Um, however, we do consider other options. Like for example, um, putting an ad in the curling rink, if you're a hearing aid, business could be a great idea. Or if you have a automotive repair shop or a a tech repair shop, putting that in a curling rink, it might only cost you $100 a month, but you're getting seen by potentially your ideal target market. Um, Additionally, like we do have a couple of those recycling bin ads. Um, I I can't say for sure that it works. Like we don't even put a call to action, which is kind of like a marketing taboo. You're always supposed to put a call to action, but there's not much space on those. So the reason we did the, the recycling bin ads is just to do a bit of brand awareness. It's not super common in the digital marketing space to venture outside of your own specialty, which makes it almost a bigger opportunity because your competitors aren't there. Um, Realtors, it's every single recycling bin, whereas I'm probably the only digital marketing company on these recycling bins. So if I had a sushi restaurant or you know a pizza company or if I was uh, had a clothing brand, I would consider doing this as long as it matches up with... Um, your brand. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I've seen uh, excavating companies recently. I, uh, I forgot the name of it. I think it's Dead Level Construction. Mm-hmm. So I 
I have a feeling I know who they are. I haven't reached out to them or anything, but uh, they do that type of marketing. I recently started seeing, I started seeing realtors faces replaced with dead level construction. I'm like, who's these, who are these guys? And you know, how's it working? Obviously it's working good because uh, like they, they have, they have it on a ton of uh, bus benches now. Whereas obviously if they were just experimenting, they might have it on maybe one, see how it goes. So it's a smart idea, right? In, in the States, you usually see what I heard is lawyers all over the bus benches and all the signage, right? Real, there's not a ton of realtors, uh, I guess may, maybe not in the main um, you know, areas where, where there's high tourism. Maybe lawyers make more money from tourism. Who knows? <laughs> just from having those incidents that happen while you're out of, out of town. Um, but um, so, so yeah, you said digital marketing. Have you ever done print? Or have you ever, what, what's your take on print? Yeah, so we've experimented. And sometimes it's good. Like the way the journalism industry is kind of staying alive right now is they do these sponsored articles. Mm -hmm. So they'll actually write a news story about you. Uh, you just have to pay them some money. Um, depending on where you're going, like, you know, um, the Langley Times, for example, it's not too expensive to have an article written about you relatively. Like um, it would be anywhere from like 800 bucks to probably like 3000 bucks. Um, whereas with, um, bigger, um, publications, like if you want to be in the BC business magazine, it's like over 10,000, wow. um, or global news. If you want to be in like a, a region, um, you can expect like 3000 to 6,000 national, um, 10,000 and up. Mm -hmm. Um, this is really keeping, um, these publications alive. And it's also like, they write it in a way that it's not too much of an ad that it's still enjoyable for the user. Cause what happens with marketing is, and you'll see this on certain newspaper ads, it's it becomes myopic. You just like skip over it. Yeah. You just flash by. Your brain is trained. And that's why with digital marketing now, the videos that we used to do, which were very cinematic, they're actually not working as well as they used to. We've switched our strategy to stay modern. And it's a lot of selfie recorded videos of people giving testimonials or user generated content, almost like the worst the video looks, the better the results are, which is mind blowing. Like uh, we've really pivoted our business to be more so on the, the digital marketing as opposed to the video creation, because the ads that are working these days are more authentic looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as we talked about this on the phone, I think, and that was one of the things that I've noticed through TikTok is those highly produced videos do terrible. Because instantly someone sees that type of quality and they're like, I'm getting sold something. I don't want it. Right. Uh, and they can skip it because it's not something that, you know, is getting pushed in their face if it's one of those organic videos. But uh, so they're almost trained from, you know, having to skip professional videos to now uh, when they see anything professional, they're like, nope. Right. So. Yeah, TikTok has blown up on those selfie recorded videos. And then they had obviously the influencer selling where it's not even the influencers saying anything about the product more. So they have it, they might be using it, they're wearing it and it's just tagged in the bottom. Right. So that's what I've seen the most success uh, online with, with influencers promoting ads now. Um, and you don't even know it's an ad. You just think it's another video of, you know, somebody dancing or somebody doing a prank. And all of a sudden you're like subtly, it's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Should I buy these leggings? That this, yeah, they, they, yeah I'm, I'll, I'll give them props for that. Let me buy them. <laughs> you know, it's it's almost like you appreciate it a bit more that they're doing it that way because it's not in your face, dramming it down your throat, um, which is what a lot of the time actually movies do. Movies have those subtle, uh, and we could talk about this all day, but I think I just had a chat, so it's fresh in my mind. That you see movies like uh, The Avengers uh, before the Audi uh, e-tron was out mm -hmm. way before. This is before they probably even announced it. They see uh, Tony Sparks uh, was literally driving it um, to the base. Uh, I can't even remember what was happening, but I just remember him driving the car. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, that is, that's a car that hasn't even been released yet. And then they're putting it in this movie. Um, and now, you know, it's out. Huge, huge hype for it. People were talking about it, actually, you know, those speculators uh, that are, you know, movie critics like, oh, they showcased their new vehicle. So that got a bunch of buzz. You know, that was their ultimately their release for the product, which is crazy. It's brilliant marketing. And not only like are people like adults who are in the market for cars going to be like, oh, an Audi is cool. When the eight year old kid that's watching this grows up they're going to subconsciously remember that Audis are cool because Iron Man drove one or Captain America drove one. And when they're 
20, 25, or whenever they can afford a, um, a like an Audi in this economy, they're going to buy it. I, I just released a video recently on Red Bull. Red Bull did those cartoon ads for so long. And yes, adults probably bought Red Bull and stuff because of like those ads as well. But those cartoons really spoke to children. I remember like the Red Bull gives you wings and the funny little guy flying away. When I was like six years old, I was watching Channel 2 and like watching the listings and the Red Bull ad would come on like every seemingly five minutes. And as these kids get older, you know, 15, 16, 20, 25, they're all still buying Red Bull and Red Bull selling billions of dollars now. And it's just constantly grown because once a company is big enough, they can invest for the long term. And that's what I think Audi's doing by getting those product placements in those Avengers movies. That's super interesting you say that. You made me think about something that I'm, I'm seeing a lot of success in and I know a lot of people are. Well, I mean, I'll say it because a lot of people already know about this. And it's basically the fact that platforms like TikTok that at one point catered to the younger demographic ended up actually catering to the older demographic um, through two ways. One, if they grew up using it, then, you know, now they're used to that type of content. They follow you. You're now, you know, their go-to person for that type of advice. Two, if they are, you know, at that stage in life where they're a little bit more influenced in their household, they're going to tell their parents, hey, this is a nice house. Hey, this is a nice, you know, product. We should get this. And their parents are like, sure. Like, you actually want something? <laughs> Let's get that. Because the whole time in real estate, uh, every time I go look at a place with a family that's kind of as a teenager, they wear the pants. They're in there and they're just like, you know, their parents are like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get what, what works for us. But reality, the teenager at behind closed doors in the car is like, I hate that house, not moving there. I'm going to stay in the old house, you know? So it's good that you have that. I was the same way. I didn't want to move. I, I like the status quo. I like that. So I, I knew where everything was in my house. I didn't want to move. But, you know, if the cool TikTok guy is showing a cool house and it means that I get to go meet the cool TikTok person, maybe I would be more open to moving. So I, I bet, yeah, in real estate decisions or vehicle decisions, uh, kids have a bit of pull. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, that that's, uh, I'm, I think that's the gold nugget of this because now I'm going to push a little bit harder, you know? Um, and it, it's always, you always need that refresher because sometimes you forget why you're doing what you're doing. And, um, ultimately that's the works the best, but let's not run out of time because these, this sushi has been eyeing me down this whole, uh, interview here. So tell us a little bit about this place. Um, there's a big debate in every city in lower mainland, um, but especially in Langley, cause that's where I debate all, everybody about the best sushi place. Mm-hmm. So there's a few places, right? Some of them not in Langley, some of them close by. Everyone's always saying, oh, this is the best, this is the best, this is the best. So this one that you have here, I've never had it before. Um, this one is out of, you said Willoughby? This is out of Murrayville. So this Murrayville. is Hitori Sushi. Hitori. Um, my friend's family actually used to own it before they sold it to the new management. Um, this is my backup best sushi place. So Ko Sushi in Murrayville is the greatest sushi in Murrayville. They have the biggest rolls. They have the most generous generous portioned uh, sashimi as well. And the, the, the staff, the team, the owners at Ko Sushi is unbelievable. Um, Hitori, also in Murrayville, is also fantastic. Um, highly recommend it. All right. Well, what did you what did you bring today? I decided to bring a mountain of sushi. So this is um, more than enough. We will probably be able to stand outside and give sushi out to people. This is the Hitori platter. So this just contains a bit of everything: chicken teriyaki, some miso soups, uh, a whole bunch of sushi. Is what I brought. Uh, I'm looking forward to that because you know, on this podcast, I try to be adventurous, and I see some stuff on there that to the average person is like, oh, just raw fish. And I'm over here like, ah, oh, there's some raw fish in there, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it live and I'm going to show everyone you can, you can try different foods without gagging live on a, a, a video. <laughs> this isn't a, a TV, but pretty much TV. So we'll see how I react to this. Cause I have uh, I'm a big texture guy. Let's do it. What, uh, do, you, do, you, what do you starting I'll with? Chop it up. I'm going to go say first cause I need to get the palate ready. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I use so what I usually get at sushi is usually going to sound hilarious, but you get the obviously the California roll, which okay. was invented in Vancouver. Oh wow, I didn't know. People that. don't know that invented in the seventies in Vancouver. The guy decided to call the California roll to make it more marketable, but the guy's from Vancouver. 
It's like the Canadian uh, California roll because exactly. it's Vancouver. Yeah. Um, and then, so, and then I usually get, um, yeah, you get like a yam, yam tempura roll mm-hmm. in there for sure. Sure. And uh, something I recently was introduced to was throw a little bit of cream cheese in that. And that's okay. so good. And then I've also had obviously like a salmon, salmon, uh, Philadelphia roll. So those always have cream cheese, salmon. Those are good. Uh, I've had raw tuna before, but you know, this is starting to look a little bit more exotic to me for sure. You know, pass me, uh, the soy sauce there. Go boss. Thank you. Um, so are you a pro sushi eater or you just eat it? I go for it. I, I can okay. use chopsticks. Yeah, well, I, I mean, there's different there. I mean, there's different ways. Everyone says, Oh yeah, you have to dip it from, uh, well, you have to you have to dip the the raw tuna in first, or side the side of the roll, or I don't even know. The best way to eat sushi is the way you want to eat sushi. Um, well, California roll, always a safe bet. I eat it everywhere. I'd say this is this stacks up there for sure. It's mm-hmm. not it doesn't stand out, but it also doesn't taste gross because I've had some California rolls that I'm like I'm disappointed. As long as you don't buy grocery store sushi, that is not a fun experience. Grocery store sushi or gas station sushi? Uh, let's not even go there. Let's just pretend that doesn't exist. I don't, I still don't understand how people do that. So what's this one? Just like a, looks like maybe like a kappa roll because it's avocado and cucumber. A little bit. No, that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Langley has one of the highest Japanese populations. Really? At least in terms of exchange students. I had a very cool Japanese teacher in high school. I took Japanese instead of French. Because I was into judo and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which has some Japanese words and some of the techniques. Um, There's like one of the biggest foreign exchange programs, maybe in Canada, is run by, um, I believe it's run by uh, Richard Jansen, who's a very awesome friend and um, great teacher throughout high school. Um, in my grad class at LSS, I think there was like 50 foreign exchange students, primarily from Japan. Interesting. In, um, in Brookswood, I think, uh, it was my, ma- um, majority of them, uh, of exchange students. Well, they were from all over. I had some from Brazil, had some from Germany, had uh, a lot from Korea, I think. Mm. That's, that's, I'm pretty sure that's where it was. Um, Yeah. Well, that's another thing is like the, the, the multinationality in Langley is insane. And I don't know if it was happening before the exchange students or if that just happened because of the exchange students. Yeah, I love it. Like, you know, even at jujitsu or even at our business, we get called by people of all different cultures and uh, someone like me who has a bit of ADHD. I love learning about that stuff. So when I work with a, a sushi restaurant or I work with a... um um you know, a cultural related business, uh, it keeps things a, a little bit more exciting. Um, you just popped my cherry. I just want to say that I've never, <laughs> never had, that's the first time I was super skeptical just now. While you were talking, I was concerned. I was like, am I, am I going to get a gag <laughs> live here? That was actually so good. Good. Um, the texture wasn't bad. That is raw. What is that? Is that tuna or is that salmon? That appears to be salmon. It didn't taste like salmon. Salmon, tuna, I, prawn I, probably. I don't like the taste of cooked salmon. Okay. But that was so good. You like it raw. Wow. Love it raw. <laughs> um, no, it, if you're looking for a healthy thing too, like obviously Crazy. you can that ditch the- blew my mind. You my can ditch the rice, gonna but- choke. My fiance's going to be choked. <laughs> He's always like, oh, try this, try that. I'm like, nope, not, do, not doing it. And she even like puts it up. Mm-hmm. I'm like a little kid. Nope, not, not trying it. That was a bit more fishy. I feel bad, Mr. Producer. There's going to be a lot left for you. Oh, yeah, that was a bit harder to do. Well, yeah, no, no, I can't do that one. Which one? Oh, I don't know. The tuna? What is that? Is that tuna? I, I love tuna. tuna. That doesn't, that, that. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I just, that, that didn't. That wasn't, that didn't go down Not easy. Not just say that. No, I had to, that was scary. I was scared for my life there. I was scared for your life and the life of my laptop as well. You got the branded laptop. Yeah. You got the branding on it. Good ultra, job. Ultra digital. Mm-hmm. 
I just thought I might might as well. Okay, so this is also salmon. I'm trying one of everything here because Good I know thought. I'm gonna be full if I have more than one. I think I've had this before. It's not bad. Mm, yeah, it's good. When you go to Japan, they definitely more so lean towards the um, nigiri the and the sashimi. Have you been? I have. I spent a bit of time in Japan. Oh, awesome. It was a very interesting culture shock. Very different than here. Um, very, very fun. Um, they have this one city called Nara where um, there's more deer than people. Deer. And they're so humanized that they like wait for the crosswalks and they bow to you when you bow to the the deer. And it's a crime for you to like disrupt the deer. Like the deer have free reign of the city. They are the rulers of Nara, Japan. Is it like in a, a forest or something? Not really. It's a it's a pretty urban environment. Like it's probably the size of Langley, to be honest. Like there's quite a few people there. It's about Is there more buildings though? There's buildings and there are like temples and it's like, it's definitely a historical cultural area of Japan. Um, but uh, like there's videos on my Instagram, me like bowing to the deer and like they bow back and you like can give them crackers and stuff. And it's only like an hour outside of Kyoto, which is another huge city in in Japan. So uh, I, had a, I had a fun time in Japan. I ate a lot of sushi. I heard sushi's not even their like uh, number one type of food. I heard it's pot, hot pot. Hot oh, pot's maybe. more of the major... Like it, it's like their um, what's a I don't know spaghetti meatballs here. What what's the what's like the go to Canadian food? Hmm. It's not poutine. No, it's not poutine. Poutine's it's definitely good. something we're Canadian food. <laughs> but when I came to Canada, this is funny. Maybe considered racist, but it's funny. It's not actually racist. But <laughs> my parents, whenever my parents would pick us up or let us go mm. to our friend's house for dinner. My parents are always cooking authentic Peruvian food. Always. Okay. We, we didn't eat, like, the only non-Peruvian um, food we had is probably, like, spaghetti and meatballs with, like, mm-hmm. but it wasn't spaghetti and meatballs. It was spaghetti with, like, ground beef, and it's like, a full homemade sauce. Mm-hmm. Whenever we go to our friends for dinner, they'd be like, how was dinner? Did you have, did you like your hot dogs with ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> did you like your macaroni and cheese yeah. with, with hot dog cut up on it? Did you like your hamburger? Because it's, like. That was kind of like the joke when we moved to Canada. Everybody, nobody really had any different style of food. That's pretty much what a lot of people ate here. Um, I don't know if that's racist. Well, we'll claim the California roll. The <laughs> California the, roll was invented here, so the Canadian food is the California we, roll. We never had, we never had a sushi until I was in. I never had sushi until I was in high school. Really? I, yeah, my dad was allergic to sh- like shellfish, mm. and um, now I'm glad I did. And now I've officially had. Probably all the types of sushi on this. There you go. So, yes. Oh, round of applause. <laughs> Someone ins- insert that. Because, um, yeah, I was always so scared to get this. <clears throat> so if you want to really push your boundaries, I've actually never even done this. And I'm pretty adventurous. At Ko Sushi in Murrayville, they have something on the menu called the sushi pizza. I've never even seen it. But there's also the sushi hamburger. So if you ever want to, like, potentially waste $20... Uh, we'll go to uh, get a sushi pizza and a sushi hamburger. I've seen that or heard of that. And it it's not that bad, is it? Or is it just a bunch of different? I have no idea. <laughs> I've never been bold enough to buy it. Like, I know what I like with sushi. So, like, I'll stay within certain parameters. And, like, I'll buy a platter. But the platter never includes the sushi pizza. No, that would be, like, the size of the platter, I think. All right. So, we didn't have this. Oh yeah, there's the important. there's the chicken teriyaki. It's very important because that chicken teriyaki definitely tastes different, and that's a good way to round out your palate at the end. All right, yeah, I'm gonna. It's not it's not the best sushi, but it's definitely up there. Um, like I said, I've had I've gone to places where I'm like, is this even? Because um, I've only had a California roll and yeah. all this like the most basic. Um, is this even a California roll? What's in this? Uh, but yeah, no, this is, this is really good. I just realized I can't talk any, say anything bad about sushi because I've never had it until now. So this is officially my first sushi, uh, test. The, the, the chicken is unreal. Um, everything's good. So go check them out in Murrayville. Get yourself a platter. Um, and yeah, let's finish it off. Maybe tell people where, where they can find you. 
Um, and uh, if you have anything upcoming, yeah. definitely here's the plug. All right, yeah, check us out on social media. You can go to longhouse.co, uh, that's our website, or you can go to long, um, longhouse.media on Instagram, or you can look at my my personal social media, Keenan Beavis. Awesome. Do you have anything in the pipeline, any events, anything that you're promoting? We have a lot of really interesting projects coming up. Um, we're working on bigger projects than we've ever worked on before, um, stuff for developers, stuff for politicians, stuff for um, laser eye surgeons. Like we got, we got everything going on right now. And we've started working with some publicly traded companies as well, which is a really exciting development. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, they can find all that online. Thanks so much for coming on today. Thanks so much for watching and experiencing my first taste of, uh, and almost throwing up of, <laughs> of uh, nigiri. Um I like the salmon. The tuna scared me. But thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, I think I earned that subscribe today. So hit that subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, click this one right here. That'll show you everything that YouTube is recommending. And right here, subscribe. So thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one. Yeah. I'm glad.